Okay, we are live. Yay! Hey, hi everyone. Hi. Welcome back to Talking Amongst Ourselves, and I'm really excited to be doing another live show. We had a big gap between last month and this month because we did the very beginning of January, and now it's closer to the end of. Um, February. But this month, uh, we're going to be talking our recommendations for middle grade March, which there is much excitement amongst the three of us for middle grade March. We're just really looking forward to it. And it's neat to see um, on Bookstagram and Booktube kind of the different recommendations that are going around. Um, but first, I think we'll just start with what we're currently reading. Um, so Bethany, do you want to share something you're sure. currently reading or what the things that you're currently reading? I have two. And one is this constant, I'm always reading <laughs> a suitable boy, which is fine. I'm, I'm, I'm okay with it. I'm just learning like I have to pace myself. I get interrupted a lot when I read and I have to pace myself with the big books. So I'm, I'm, I don't want to not read. I was telling Becky this earlier. I don't want to not read a big book because I'm daunted by it or because I get interrupted a lot. So I'm like, I'm just going to be okay with, you know, hey, I read 25 pages today or this week or this month. <laughs> so yeah, I'm still working through that. And I can pick it up and like really enjoy the characters and remember them. And that's important too, because I'm like, if you're not remembering the characters, you might want to DNF that. <laughs> because if you're like picking up a month later, and be like, okay, wait, what was that guy's point in this book again? But he's writing the characters vividly. I have no issues. And then another big one, semi big, it's called The Fifth Season. I don't know if either of you watch uh, or no, not watch, listen to Ann Bogle's podcast. Um, I just started. Yes. What should I, I read? listen to like three episodes today while I was working on a project? <laughs> That's awesome. She recommended this book to um oh now I'm not gonna remember her name, but she has an yes, Instagram so channel called or Instagram page Ink and Fable, I believe is what it's called. I don't remember her name, but she was on there and um this was what Anne had recommended to her. And it's kind of like I think it's like post apocalypse and it's very dark. It's very complicated. Um, it's a, like a fantasy world. And there's this woman whose son is murdered and she's, she has some special powers and it, it's kind of like unfolding the world as you're figuring out like what she's going to do about her son. And she's got to track down her husband and her missing daughter. And there's just a lot going on, but it's really interesting. So if I, th I feel like if you like high fantasy, this would be like, cause it's, I think it's like science fi fiction and fantasy, both mm -hmm. like all mixed in, but um, yeah, it's good. It's just dark. So it's one of those where you like pick it up and you're like, I am like really worn out after reading like 50 pages. Cause I'm like, it's heavy stuff, but yeah, but it's, but it's, it's really well written. Yeah. Yeah. And it's different. I like, I always am up for reading something different. And I was telling Becky earlier, like mixing and, you know, like, oh, some middle grade. Now it's time for like a classic. Now it's time for some size, you know, just kind of keeping it mixed up a little bit. It helps keep me out of a reading slump. So, but yeah, those are what I'm reading right now. Very nice. You have a figuratively heavy book and a literally heavy book. <laughs> Very true. Yes. <laughs> Becky, do you want to share what you're currently reading? Sure. Um, I'm taking my sweet time with it, but I am currently reading Emma by Jane Austen. Oh, yay! It is my first time reading Emma. I saw, I think, I think it was Gwyneth Paltrow. You're going to, with Gwyneth Paltrow in, a, in an Emma rendition. I think I saw that my sophomore year of college. And I really don't remember much about it. And I'm sure it was condensed to two hours or less. So I'm sure there was a lot of the story that wasn't included anyway. Um, so, but I know people who love Jane Austen tend to love Emma or Pride and Prejudice. One of those two tends to be their favorite. I know a couple outliers. Like I, I have another friend who loves Persuasion. Right. But so many people talk about Emma. I was like, okay, wow. Well, think it's time that I need to read Emma. So I'm, 
I'm taking it slowly. Um, I've had a sinus infection since oh, yeah. mid January. So I feel like some days, like my brain's just a little bit foggy and, um, it's a little bit harder for me to blaze through this the way that I could a more contemporary fiction. But each time I pick it up, I'm actually really enjoying it. And I'm having a very similar experience reading this as I did um, The Woman in White. Ooh. They're very they're very different books, but my reaction to the story in that I'm like, oh my goodness. Oh no, she didn't. And, oh, oh yes, this character just walked in the room. And then I'm like annoying my husband by reading passages out loud and like laughing out loud. Like what's funny? And I'm like, okay, well here's the context, and they're doing this. Now let me read all of this to you. And isn't that so funny? And he just kind of looks at me like, okay. Um, it's very yeah. So I'm, about, so I'm about halfway through, um, and my goal is to have it finished by the end of February. So I'm a little less than a week. Um, but I'm not going to be hard on myself. If I don't end up finishing it until March, I'm going to be okay with that because I'd rather take my time with it and be able to enjoy it than make myself plow through and end up missing things. So yeah. Yeah. there's no book police. No, no book police. And it, it is, a. am really glad I waited until February to read it because it's a very great book when you're looking forward to spring because it is very light in tone. Yeah. And, so as I'm like wanting warmer weather and wanting sunshine, I feel as though the book is bringing sunshine. <laughs> yes. Yeah. And things like strawberry picking. I was thinking the same thing. Yeah. The box hill. Yes. Yes. Um, yeah. Very fun. Uh, so yes, my currently reading, I have two. I'm doing Doris at um, all the books she's hosting. She called it I Heartathon. Um, and so one of my book, one of the challenges is to read a book you've wanting, you've been wanting to read for a long time. And I had several that I was, um, was torn between, but I finally settled on the unlikely pilgrimage of Harold Fry, which is about Harold Fry, who gets a letter from his friend, Queenie Hennessy, he hasn't seen in 20 years, saying that she's in hospice and she's dying from cancer and she just wanted him to know, um, and so he's thinking, he wants to write a letter back to her. But was like, what do you say to someone who's in hospice? Um, like, sorry, you know what I mean? It's really, you know, what, what can you say that's tactful? Um, and so he's about to put the letter in the mailbox. And then he's like, ah, I'll just, I'll walk to the next mailbox. And then he just doesn't stop walking. And he decides he's going to walk 500 miles to see her. Um, yeah. And, and like he calls and he says, he says, wants to leave a message for her at the hospice place and says, you know, tell her I'm walking there and she has to stay alive for me to visit. Um, but, uh, you know, people keep talking about it's like a really hopeful book. I'm assuming it ends hopefully. Right now, it's just making me really, really sad because oh. it's talking about kind of all of the ways that he and his wife have hurt one another. And oh. how they're yeah, how their marriage is really sad. And it's not one wrong thing um, that either of them did. It's like all these little things that have kind of piled up and they've never talked about them. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, it's just making me very sad right now. So I'm halfway though. I'm going to keep going. Hopefully it will get better. But the one thing that I really liked is I bought this used and then I found in um, in there... It says, happy 90th birthday, much love. And so somebody gave like an older person this, because um, he's 65 when he's doing this. Um, so yeah, so the jury's still out on whether I'll like this. It's the the writing's very engaging and everything, but. Yeah, I was going to say, if, if it's making you feel all those things, it sounds as though the author's got a very yes. realistic, but a very approachable uh, approachable isn't quite the word I want but accessible writing style that sounds yes. really interesting yes and yeah and so I think my hesitancy to like be excited about it is more with what my expectation of the book was mm. opposed to the actual book itself um yeah and then the other book I just started today is an audiobook and it's A Curse as Dark as Gold which is 
a Rumpelstiltskin retelling set during the Industrial Revolution. And so this girl, her father owned a cotton mill and then he dies. And so it kind of falls upon her to, uh, I think she's like 14 or 15. And so it's like, she has to run the mill or they starve. Um, and so then someone comes into town who can turn and, uh, you know, string into gold. And um, so I'm really excited. I just am really lately and just very excited about fairy tale retellings. So yeah. 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 Those are my, that sounds my, like a lot of fun. Yeah. So, and, um, I think, I feel like either a mystery or fairy tale retell, like genre fiction is very suitable for audiobooks because there's stuff happening. And like, like I would never want to listen to like Ian McEwen on audiobook for the first time I'm reading something. Cause I would be like, Oh, oh let me, let me stop this. I need to underline that quote in the book. Mm -hmm. oh, stop here again. Um, so yeah, more like, plot-based books, I guess. Yes. Um, yeah. So I feel like our um, current TBRs are kind of modest because we're going to be really kicking things into gear for middle grade March. Do you like that segue there? <laughs> Very smooth. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so before we went live, we were talking a little bit how it was the second year that Life Between Words and Books and Jams are hosting Middle Grade March. And Kate and I did not participate last year, but Bethany did. She was one of the pioneers of this. Um, <laughs> so Bethany, what really, but, and also the whole theme for this uh, discussion for today's live stream was Bethany's idea. So we have Bethany to thank for sharing the Middle Grade love. And Kate and I are so excited. So Bethany, do you want to talk a little bit about your experience last year? Yeah. Um, basically, I followed Katie from Life Between Words on um, YouTube and then, of course, on Bookstagram. And when she started bringing this uh, to everybody's attention, she made a video about it and everything. I was like, middle grade? Like, what is middle grade? <laughs> I don't know. I just hadn't really realized what the term meant. So I was like, okay. I'm kind of interested and I forget there was a couple different books that it, you know she had shown and I was like ooh like I I think I could really be interested in that um one of them I have a list here one of them was The Little White Horse and um, that was supposedly um J.K. Rowling's like one of her favorite books as a child and so it's kind of a classic but also middle grade and of course the classic thing pulled on my heartstrings. I was like, Ooh, a classic, you know, like I could get it. I could get into this. And their group pick for that for, um, 2018 was the girl who drank the moon. Mm -hmm. So I wanted to read that too. And I believe they did one, um, Instagram live show every week, which was yeah. so much fun. I mean, it's like kind of like what we're doing here. Only it was just mm -hmm. her and Krista back and forth. And I mean, just, feeling like you could participate you were reading along and um different people just popping out different titles of what they were reading and stuff like that it was cool it was like the community the book bookstagram slash booktube community all there and kind of made you feel like really included i thought that was cool yes. so it wasn't only like the challenge it was also how they did the challenge that i felt was really successful and of course i read like 10 i think <laughs> middle grade books so yeah and i have a couple favorites from that list um if you guys want me to go into that now or if you want to wait i don't know you can go ahead. okay so the first one i want to talk about is echo by pam Munoz Munoz ryan I don't know how you say her middle name, Muna's Ryan, but Ryan, R-Y-A-N is her last name. Um, Echo was like a little bit of everything, magical realism with some historical fiction and then music. Like if you love music, there's all of these musical references in it. And I, I've heard the audiobook is like next level. Like it, it's got the music in, I don't know how to explain it without like, if you haven't read it yet, but like there's, music involved in each section mm -hmm. and it's like music you would know 
about um, music that's appropriate to that character at that time. If that makes any sense, it's it's really neat the way she incorporates music into this book. But she's got three different kids in three different places, and they're all tied together and connected by this harmonica. There's a boy from Germany, um, Friedrich. There's Mike, who's from Pennsylvania. I believe he was an orphan and had like a younger and older brother. And then Ivy was um, in California. And so each of them has this kind of like, it's like a World War II his, historical setting. And each of them has this like different perspective on the war, perspective on what life is like for them, where they're at. It kind of gave me, has either of you read A Book Thief? Yes. I haven't Friedrich, read it. Friedrich's um, story kind of like gave me Book Thief vibes, which was really good because that's like one of my favorite books. Mm. So it was just really unique and really well written. And there's just like, like I said, you know, magical realism meets historical fiction with music. It's like, who's done that? I don't know, but it's just really cool. It was, and it was a big book. So it was not like, oh, I was done with it in a day. It took me a little while to get through it. Really enjoyed it. And I thought, okay, yeah, definitely middle grade. I'm, I'm down for middle grade. Cause I thought, you know, is it going to just be like a kid's book? I, I think we all sort of think that when we think middle grade, like, is it going to be like deep? You know, that's what I'm looking for out of literature. <laughs> yes. And I think sometimes it'll be, oh, it's a three-star read, you know? Yeah. yeah. So, Which, some can be that way, but then there are the gems. Oh <laughs> my gosh. Yes. This was definitely one of those. Yeah. Um, another one, kind of a similar thing, um, historical, uh, Inside Out and Back Again. Now this is by Tang Ha Lai. And her last name is called L-A-I. She One was from Saigon. Uh-huh. From okay. um, Vietnam. Anyway, so this is a verse novel. It's a novel written in like a poetic way. Like it's it's basically poetry. So it's, it's narrative, right? Yeah, it's really nifty. I'm like poetry. I was I know I like poetry, <laughs> but I feel like even if you didn't love poetry, you this is a still a good way to um, get in, interested in poetry because you've got this storyline. Um, it's okay. Her name is Ha. She struggles to learn English in Alabama. She's an immigrant from Saigon, and her she moves to Alabama with her mother and three brothers, and they're. Uh, I don't know. I don't want to give a spoiler way of what happens, but like they're, they're kind of unsure of some different things. And then they move to the U S and she has just this experience, you know, she's already learned all kinds of things in her own language, but when she's in, you know, the United States in school, they're kind of like going over things with her as though she were like uneducated or a baby or doesn't know things. And she knows she's smart, but she can't communicate that to them in English. So it's kind of like, she feels like, oh, I'm, you know, I feel really stupid right now because they're treating me kind of like I'm stupid, but I'm not, I'm smart. I know things. Which and her own language very well. Yes. It's so good. I mean, just getting the perspective of a child, I believe she's 10 um, in this book. And it's just like, wow, to move from one culture to a completely different culture during a war, I mean, we just have no idea what that, I mean, what that even would be like. So I thought that was just amazing. And it, I believe it won several awards. Uh, I mean, it was well worth it. Yeah. Well, worthy of the awards for sure. You know, what's so funny is this one isn't written in verse, but then there's one I was looking at called Listen Slowly. Um, oh, yes. That's the, that's the same author. So that one, this one, she does the reverse and it's a girl who's been living in California and then they travel to Vietnam Ooh. and it's right after the Vietnamese war and like everything's different. The food's different. Um, it's not her, you know, her first language and um, it says Vietnam is hot, smelly and the last place she wants to be. Oh. Yeah, so that's so it would be I actually would consider maybe even reading both of them. Um, because I think I have access to both audiobooks. 
Um, yeah. All right. Sorry. I was going to like launch into oh, another you're thing. Fine. You're fine. I think it's definitely worth it going, going into that, like reading both and they go pretty fast because it is in verse. I mean, like, I don't know. Some people read poetry differently than, you know, prose. So sometimes poetry does go slower and that's fine. Um, I felt like this wasn't hard poetry, like to read through. So mm -hmm. I went through it pretty quickly. Um, okay. uh, but it was so very impactful. Very good. And then the third one I'll just get through real quick, um, was monster calls by Patrick Ness. Oh. It's got like the dark, like black and gray cover with the monster on it. That kind of looks like a tree. Um, I wish I had these books. I'm like, I need to hunt them down and buy them. But, um, I don't have them on me right now. I've read all of them were library books when I read them. Cause you know, middle grade was new and I was like, I don't know if I'm going to like these or not. Well, and also, I would not pay for a hardback that I hadn't read. Yeah. That's how yeah. I feel too. I'm so cheap. I'm like, I don't want to buy it. I don't know if I'll love it. Like I'm not spending money on that. Yeah. Terrible. Or, or like if it's at the library bookstore for $2. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yes. yes, definitely. Used books, totally different story. But I don't have like any used bookstores close. We have one library book sale once a year. <laughs> That's what I get. Goodness. Wow. Yeah. Sad. Um, so Monster Calls addresses grief. Um, yes. And that was really good. Strength that middle grade has because it's through the eyes of a child, but mm -hmm. it's really very real gripping topics. Oh yes. Yeah. I don't, I don't want to like get into it too deep cause there, it could be spoilery, but, um, the main character is a 13 year old boy. His mom is sick with cancer and my mom passed away from cancer in 2017. So I mean, my, our viewers aren't going to know that, but that really was very, um, cathartic reading that for me. It was really good. So, you know, reading the books about grief and, you know, look, from the eyes of a child, it's such a like, I don't know, it's almost a healing thing, I feel like, because, you know, you kind of go back, especially w when it involves a close parent, a close yeah. relative, you know, you go back to your childhood days and you think of your times with this, this parent or close family member and you're like, you know, you feel a lot of things that were um, foundational in your life. The, this person, you know, kind of made you the person you are in a sense, you know, they are part of your early learning years and like, like I said, your foundation. So, you know, seeing it from the eyes of a child, it's like, oh, wow, you address a lot of emotions that you don't maybe really think about as an adult. And I, he didn't think of them as a kid. This 13 year old is just like, what's going on? You know, like I'm, yeah. I'm dealing with these complex emotions that are too big for me. Like they're, they're too big for all of us. Right. 13 year old or 26 year old or 50 year old. I'm sure, you know, it's just that really someone good. is gone forever. Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's a lot. It was really good. So I highly recommend that one. If it just no going into it, it's a book about grief. Like if that's not what you want to sign on for, don't read it. <laughs> but if yeah. you're okay with that, if that's something you're looking for, definitely very good book. Cool. Anyway, so those are my three middle grade high recommendations from last year. Awesome. Excellent. My TBR just got three or four books longer as it does <laughs> every time we do one of these live streams. <laughs> and hey, there's a poetry book in there, Becky. I know. I was thinking about that and I was like, oh, that would check off one of my books out of my comfort zone. Yes. So. And I just yeah. put a hold on um, Brown Girl Dreaming by Jacqueline Woodson. Oh, I want to read that. I just, I just heard about that on the yeah. podcast I was listening to today. And that one also sounded really good. Yeah. Yeah. I've just heard it's really, really good. Um, I don't think I've heard anyone who's like, I didn't like it. <laughs> so, yeah, I think in audiobook form. Yeah. I'm just like telling myself like narrative poetry. That's what I'm going to, the poetry yeah. I'm going to love. Um, okay. So maybe we'll do one recommendation and keep going around uh, one at a time. So um, I'll just go ahead and get my self-promotion out of the way for the yeah. Betsy Tacey 2019 read-along. Um, 
And I can't, I can't remember. I mean, I know it was before high school that I read these. So I think these are definitely middle grade books. And the March one is Heaven to Betsy. And we finally get to the illustrations that I really like. I really oh, like. let me see. Oh, they're so charming. Aren't they charming? They're it's so just, cute. Yeah. I just, I finally really like these. So yes, now we're in the high school years. And um, there's lots of like, uh, who likes who? And um Yes, uh, Betsy making new friends, and then here's another one. Oh, it's so cute! Oh, I can't wait. I'm so excited. Um, and then also, um, Bet Betsy like, there's no uh, spoiler alert. You don't really need one. She loves school still. Um, so yes, so it is fun because you do you do get to hear about the different a bit about the different teachers and the classes that they're doing, and also the progress that Betsy's making with her writing. Um, and then also you just see more of her family and a couple. Uh, there's like a fair number of new characters that are introduced, and it's just so much fun. And um, yeah, I really like. There's lots of like Betsy hanging out with a bunch of friends, and I love scenes where like all the friends are hanging out together. Um, so yes, I do think for people who maybe felt in the first four books like you're like I liked it, but I wanted a bit more. I think you'll be very satisfied upon reading them. I think they definitely get more satisfying as you go. Like I felt like Betsy and Tacy go downtown definitely felt like more substantial than. Um, you know, Betsy Tacy. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and it just, it keeps, it keeps happening with the high school books. So yes, that's one that I'm really looking forward to and will definitely savor. So I guess Becky, do you want to do one? Sure. Well, we've got uh, a few comments. So I thought I would read those. Oh, quick. So Jessica, Wisconsin yeah. mom, do you live in Wisconsin? Because Wisconsin is a great state. If you live in Wisconsin, I've been there multiple times. Um, these two books, Becky, Bethany, the books you were talking about earlier, sound fascinating. Rainy Day Reads. I can't wait to read Inside Out and Back again. We have a library book sale happening March 22nd. I'm so excited. That is oh, wow. super exciting. Bobby Davis, I love library book sales. I always spend too much money, though. I just have trouble carrying everything at library <laughs> book sale because at least the ones I've been through, they tend to be pretty cheap. It's like another book for 50 cents. My pack is <laughs> Well, actually, so well, sometimes I've been so desperate. I've like locked my wallet in like the um, what is it called? I don't want people to see it, but I just take a twenty. I'm like, I'm taking a twenty. And that's it. <laughs> that's excellent discipline. I love it. Rainy oh. day reads. I have my Goodreads open as I watch. Just adding to my TBR. I do the same thing. Speaking of grief, loss, and a novel free verse. Karen Hess's Out of Dust is amazing. Oh, I haven't heard of that one. Yeah. Oh, I'll have to look that's, that up. That's one that's a uh, narrative one, narrative poetry or free verse, like she said, um, that mm -hmm. I read in um, college in our children's lit course. And I really liked it. It's set during the Dust Bowl. Um, oh, cool. So it's such a like vivid time period and it lends itself so like, so well to having like really intense Im imagery for um for the poems That's oh, what rainy day reads started reading heaven to betsy today and you love the illustrations too that's so great to hear yeah. oh and i'm sad jessica was kind of oh. that you left Wisconsin. but south dakota is at least still in the midwest it's not like you moved to arizona yes that's i true. feel like that would be a really big culture shock <laughs> okay now that we're caught up on that what was i supposed to be talking about recommendations yeah you recommend one then definitely will okay go. so um as we were talking about a little bit earlier if some of you missed it kate and i weren't really that familiar with the term middle grade for reads until we heard katie from like between words talking about it and then Bethany kind of encouraging us to do it. So for a long time, I called those books that were like upper elementary, middle school, or like easier reads for high school. A lot of the books that I really enjoyed, I always just called classic girlhood books. Because <laughs> I feel like there are a lot of 
especially books geared towards that like 10 to 12 year age mm -hmm. um that are they're just a lot of classics that i feel fond of so i grabbed just a couple i mean i, I could go on and on but um pollyanna is one of my favorite books that i read as a kid and then i read it again as an adult and i still absolutely love it um, a lot of people give Pollyanna a bad rap and they use Pollyanna in a derogatory way to talk about her joy. And it is a very happy book, but I don't think there's anything wrong with being glad about things. So well, I there's this idea now that if something is cheerful and or like shows joy in it, that it's trite. Exactly. No, and actually Pollyanna goes through like, she didn't know her mom growing up. She's lost a parent and she's living with an aunt. And she she goes through some pretty hard things in the latter half of the book. So it's all about her trying to find joy and gladness. Mm -hmm. and, and I don't know. I, I feel like Pollyanna gets a bad rap, but it is one of my favorite books. And I and um anyway, since it's at that reading level, I just had to mention it. And then book that kind of in a similar vein that I only read a couple years ago, and I'm so sad I didn't read it in my childhood, is Heidi, which is also kind of another, you know, a child has gone through loss and is living with a distant relative, you know, a distant to them, like their relationship isn't very close, relative. Um, and it's, it's very sweet. Um, and of course you have all the scenes of living up near the Alps. And one thing I have to shout out when my friends Joanna sent this to me, I'm so happy because oh, ha not only is it beautiful, if you will notice in this picture, Heidi has dark hair. And in the book, Heidi is described as having dark curly hair. And so many <laughs> books, the cover art is her like straight blonde hair and braids, like yeah. kind of this German, Swiss, Austrian, you know, Northern Italy stereotype. And every time I'm like, no, if you've read the book, you know that Heidi has dark curly hair. Uh, Get the illustration right. Um, so I was very happy when she found this for me because it has an accurate Heidi on the cover. <laughs> so anyway, I feel like if you like Heidi or you like Pollyanna, I, I feel like they're kind of in a similar vein. Mm -hmm. um, so I kind of recommend them together. So kind of like a two for one. Nice. So those are some like more on the classic end of things, but definitely a middle grade reading level. Yes. I have not read Heidi. Me either. It's very sweet. There were, there are some books that like, I just feel like my mother should have had like a list of these are classic girlhood books that you're going to read. I also, I did not read Little Women as a kid and I did not read Anne of Green Gables as a kid. Oh, really? I thought you had read Anne of Green Gables. No. Oh. No, I read it as an adult. Wow. Um, so I read Anna Green Gables as a kid, and the first time I read it, I didn't really like it. I was a very practical child. And <laughs> Green... what, Kate? I said Anne is not. And Anne is not. Um, and so when you're, I don't remember how old I was, you know, somewhere between nine and 12 when I first read Anna Green Gables. It was just kind of like, wow, her head's in the clouds. I don't think I'd want to be friends with her. Um, <laughs> Talks to the fairies. But, yeah, she talks to fairies. Like, I'm a kid that's reading the newspaper with my breakfast. And the encyclopedia. <laughs> are fun. Like, I'm not talking to fairies. <laughs> um, but for some reason, I, I know I've read it at least three or four times. So over time, Anne has really grown on me. And I decided that this year I would gradually read all the Anne books. Because I think I only read the first... I know I at least picked up the first three. I don't even know if I finished Anne of the Island. Um, and so I didn't actually end up finishing the whole series. And Bethany has been reading a lot of Ellen Montgomery the last couple of years. Yeah. That now has me like feeling as though I'm missing out. So I just <laughs> finished Avonlea. What, Kate? Sorry, I just said I still haven't finished the whole series either. Okay. I I feel I felt so wowed by Anne of Green Gables and the other ones. I was like, yeah, they were nice. You know what I mean? But I didn't. I wasn't quite as like, oh, it was amazing. Yeah, so. I really enjoyed an Anne of Avonlea. I I know I've read it before, but I completely forgotten everything. Um, and I really did enjoy 
how you see more of Avonlea and you're introduced to a lot more characters and it's less it's true. And like the, the title, and I was like, why didn't I think about this? Like the title really reflects it. But the first one really is Anne of Green Gables and her life at Green Gables and the berries live not that far. So, you know, and her going to school and in Anne of Avonlea, I really do feel as though her world expands a little bit and you get to see more of Avonlea. Yeah. And by the time I was prepped, wrapping that up is like I can't even believe some of these characters weren't in the first book I feel as though I got to know them so well and yeah we really enjoy who they are as characters which just has me more excited for Anne of the Island because I'm sure I'm gonna meet even more people I was swoony for Anne of the Island actually that one I definitely enjoyed more I think as a kid I think I remember liking Anne of the Island better but I don't I honestly can't remember if I ended up finishing it mm-hmm. yeah um well you'll just have to read it yeah so that is one reason why i'm like so like such a like evangelist for the betsy casey series is because that is that betsy ray is my ann shirley like i'm very fond now of anna green gables but it's really hard for me to ever be quite as sentimental about it as i am about the Betsy Tacey books. Yeah, I'd never even heard of Betsy Tacey until you were raving about them. And now that I'm reading them, I really feel as though my nine or 10 year old self would have been obsessed with those books. And my nine or 10 year old self was a very narrow minded reader. (laughs) So that's saying something. Well, I mean, you probably, in the back of your mind, are you sure? Because remember Kathleen Kelly talks about them and you've got mail? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you don't, so so you had heard of them, I guess, technically. But I didn't see You've Got Mail until I was a older teenager. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So I was I was probably fifteen or sixteen before I ever saw You've Got Mail. Okay. Yeah, now it's I, one of my favorite films. But it wasn't one that I like really grew up watching. I don't know why they aren't more well known like there's there's only been a brief window where they haven't been in print sorry this is not a betsy tacy live show well (laughs) what's your next recommendation oh um i liked wish tree um oh what is the name of the author of that wish tree is that Catherine applegate yes i was gonna say apple something and i'm like yeah if you don't know just don't say it somebody will come up with it (laughs) yes um I thought that was really good. Um, mm-hmm. A lot of people have heard of it. A lot of people have read it. Um, and I think it's one of those books that you're just like, it's it's very moralistic. You know, it's got this big moral to the tree. And, you know, the tree is like the main character. And there's, it's a good lesson for kids that are growing up and looking at other kids and thinking, oh, they're different from me. And, you know. How, what's the appropriate way to deal with that and stuff? So I really liked that. Very heartwarming, very sweet, um, and timely. It was timely. I forget when it was written, but it wasn't written too terribly long ago. I do know that. But I think, you know, with a book, like you were saying, not reading Anne of Green Gables until you were older, and now us, Becky and I, hadn't read Betsy Tacy when we were young, I think it's funny that reading it at a certain time can be very impactful and it makes a big difference. Like Becky was saying, you know, people are like torn between Emma and Pride and Prejudice, but usually those two are like the top two. I think sometimes it's just a matter of the luck of the draw when you read it and how your experience was reading it makes it your favorite book. Yes. I mean, I read Anne, uh, not when I was real young. I mean, I was young, but like, I think I was like, pretty much like 14, 15, maybe when I read Anne of Green Gables. I mean, it was like a whole nother world and I'd sit outside and read them. And it was just like this experience that I wanted to repeat all the time, go back to Avonlea and spend time with Anne. And, you know, it's just a nostalgic thing. I think with, um, I mean, even David Copperfield, not that that's middle grade or anything, but like I sat in my, at my parents' house reading that in like the woods and I have such like fond memories of it because of that reason. Like it was the experience. So, you know, I think you're like 
onto something with, okay, we need to have a list of these books our kids need to read or our daughters need to read. Like, these are the books you need to read while you're young and impressionable. Yes. So you can swoon over Gilbert Blythe and get into mischief with Betsy. And yes. yeah, I agree. I think, you know, yeah. encouraging that to have that experience well, as you're young. Time, anytime too now where I read a book, and I'm like, oh, that was so good. I'll text my sister-in-law and I'll be like, Portia has to read this. Aww. And what's fun is Portia has very similar taste to me. So like I, oh. I forget the first one that I recommend. Oh, Ella Enchanted. Um, oh, that's a fun one. Yes, love that? that one. Maybe I'll, I have it here. Maybe I'll just talk about Ella Enchanted now. Yes, I'll, do. Talk about the two then that I, the most recent recommendations. Yeah, so Ella Enchanted. Okay, this is one that I read as a kid and I'm incredibly sentimental about. I think I've read this um, probably close to 10 times. I've read it a lot. I is love this it. why you love Cinderella so much? Is this part of the reason? <laughs> That's so true, Bethany. Had to ask. It's got a lot going for it, okay? One, it's character-based. Two, mm -hmm. retelling of Cinderella. And three, I love so much. Um, I love stories that are told in segments of three. So, like, I love that it starts out, she's at home, then she's at boarding school, and then she's traveling. Like the movie, The Parent Trap, how it's like at camp, at the two different houses, and then when they come together. I love that pacing. Something about it, it's like just when you start to, if you could possibly feel like a little bit bogged down in one setting, it changes. Mm -hmm. um, and I really like in this, which in most, in almost every retelling of Cinderella that I've read, there's more character development with a prince. Because it's really hard to do less character development than the Disney cartoon. Um, <laughs> So, uh, yeah, it's, it's just so good. And also it's a really great example of a girl who knows how to stand up for herself without being like brazen, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, she's just very, she has agency and, um, yeah. And there's humor in it and it's just in, an incredibly endearing book and the audiobook is really great it's a girl reads it and there's music like to transition between different chapters um so this is a great book and you could blast through it it is not but 230 pages so very short very easy and then the other one the other Porsche book that I did was um the goose girl um mm -hmm by Shannon Hale, which I don't know, as I was looking at it, I was kind of wondering if it was more in YA because it is almost 400 pages. Um, but I think if I had been into it, like I could have read it as like a 10 year old. I'm not sure. I was reading one article about middle grade and it did say that sometimes middle grade is shelved with children's and sometimes it's shelved as young adult. And sometimes it's more the content of the book that helps define it whether or not it's middle grade or young adult. So I do think it's kind of a gray. It young can... adult just tends to have more mature themes than middle grade. Yes. Um, but like never, never more in Wondersmith were like 500 pages long. And I would definitely put that more in a middle grade category than I would a young adult. Yeah. Um, so. so the goose girl is just, it's a retelling of the fairy tale is called the goose girl, right? I believe so. Okay. Um, and actually, it's funny because Becky and I were texting about this one. And Becky was like, yeah, you know, I liked it. Um, but I wasn't, like, blown away by it. And I was just like, oh, I loved it so much. But I think part of why is because it was so different than any other fairy tale I had read. So I loved being surprised. I really had, like, I couldn't even guess what was going to happen. Um, so I really enjoyed that. And it's about Ani and she can um, communicate with certain animals. Um, and again, in this, I like the um, kind of organic development of the romantic relationship. Um, yeah, it's just really enjoyable. And I loved, I loved Ani as a character. So those were two more. Um, hey, have but, you read um, The Two Princesses of Bamar? That's also you know by Gil Carson Levine? It's on my extensive middle grade <laughs> March list. But I have that one. 
audiobook and I really want like some fairy tales in there. And have you read it? I have. I was obsessed with it because I read it around the same time as I was into. I mean, I read Gil Carson Levine a lot as a kid. Um, I read oh, yeah. I was obsessed with Oh Enchanted. And then that led to um, The Two Princesses of Bamar, which I felt like was kind of similar in the level, in the same level. And mm -hmm. there are all these fairy books that she she wrote. Um, the Princess Tale. Yes, the Princess Tale. Those. And they are so snarky and hilarious and like and just so fun. So um, much fun. They're a little younger, I feel like, than Ella Enchanted. A little bit, and they're very short. Cinder, Cinder Ellis, which is about a boy named Ellis. Cinder Ellis and the Glass Hill, I think, was my favorite, which is a Cinderella retelling but i don't remember if he's a prince or not but it's with a boy well, yeah which is kind of like that that twist that was my favorite one in those little that yeah. and um so cute i, I got one her, her what her sleeping beauty retelling was but i like that one too hmm. i vaguely remember them it's been a long time i bought one for my daughter she's not ready for him yet but i bought one for her at a used library sale and i'm like she carries it around with her everywhere because it's a princess, but um, I'm just like, they're so funny. My husband picked one up and was like starting to read it to her just a little bit, like a couple lines. And he's like, this is hilarious. <laughs> and I'm like, I don't think he was expecting him to be, you know, like that snarky yeah. kind of tongue in cheek. Like she says these sarcastic comments throughout the book about, you know, the prince or, you know, character she's talking about. It's just fun. They're fun. Yeah. I think you're, I think you'd really enjoy them, Kate. They're they're almost novellas, like yeah. longer than a short story. But I think each book is only like ninety or hundred pages or something. Like you could almost read it in one sitting. That's so fun. I feel like uh, Anthony Trollope would approve of her snark. Oh, for sure, for sure. Yeah. So, so the cool. only the only part, like for an example, I'm I'm pretty sure I don't remember if it was. It must have been the Sleeping Beauty one because I know I read that one many times. I remember like there's this scene where the prince comes and he's like, I feel like I'm supposed to kiss her, but she's sleeping and her mouth is open and her hair is like messy from sleeping. And this is really weird. Like, why would I kiss the princess right now? And so like it kind of has this, these things that we take for granted in fairy tales. She puts yeah. a fun... Yeah. Like, like little twist on them. That she's just laying there like that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, oh, Bobby Davis says when I was 10, I was obsessed with Matilda by Roald Dahl. I was I was saying to my husband, like, I feel like Roald Dahl. So what am I trying to say? I have some hesitations about Roald Dahl, but I was like, but you know, even with these hesitations, like I think he's kind of cynical. And in Matilda, like, I feel like the fat grownups are like all bad um, and the pretty ones are good. But all that being said, I'm like, he's really creative and he's just a really fun storyteller. Yes. Like, uh, who, like all of the Peter was just listening to. We listened to together the audiobook of um, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and like all of the different stuff that's in the factory. I'm like, who comes up with this stuff? Yeah. I did not read Roald Dahl until I was an adult. My husband read him as a child. Mm -hmm. And um, the last couple of years, I've really enjoyed reading his books. I don't think I would have liked them as a kid because they are a little more fantastic. And uh, again, I was the kid reading the newspaper, the encyclopedia. Yeah. Um, but as an adult, I've been really enjoying them. And actually, he, one of the books that I want to read for middle of grade March is called Boy. And it's his basically autobiography for children. Yeah. Um, and I'm told that the audiobook is very good. And my library didn't have it a couple of years ago, but they have it now. So oh, that's great. And it was available. So I put in my request on Overdrive. <laughs> great. Yeah, there's so many um there's like newer audiobooks that have been done and lots of like famous actors have done the audiobooks. So one at a time we're going through them. The one we have on hold now is James and the Giant Peach. Um, oh, that's one I haven't read yet. Yeah, I haven't read it either. So I'm excited. So I think more people are like familiar with the, maybe not more people, but I think a lot of people are familiar with the movies. Um, yeah. The Roald Dahl books turned into movies. Like 
I remember watching Matilda as a kid and loving that, but yeah. like I didn't read the book as a kid. So I'm kind of wondering if it's like a split, if there's like people who read the books as kids and like grew up with the books or both because I didn't read any of the books till I was an adult. And I think the well, only I one, like maybe two. People from the UK in particular are probably more. Familiar. Oh yeah, that's true. Um, Bethany, were you next? Who no, Becky. That? Oh, Becky. Okay. Go back. Well, I already mentioned um, Boy is one that someone had recommended to me a couple years ago. But again, my library didn't have it or didn't have the audio book, but now they do. So that is, I was so excited. That was high up on my list for this year. And then Q books. I, I'm very curious about these books. So one was recommended to me. And then another one, it, it, they were on the shelf right next to each other. So the one recommended to me was Missy Piggle Wiggle and the Whatever Cure. I really don't know anything about it, but a friend of mine thought it was really fun. And it's written by Ann M. Martin, who wrote The Babysitter's Club, which oh. was like my go-to series as a kid. Yes. And then as I was picking up this book, the on the shelf next to it was this book called better to wish in the family tree i think it's a trilogy so each book follows a different generation oh cool um and i think that i think it's set 1930s in maine so i was like 1930s maine and then martin i need to read this now i will say i'm a little bit nervous because i love babysitter's club as a kid i read one other book standalone book by Anna Martin as a kid or an early teenager and I absolutely hated it oh, no. and it does not have very good reviews on Goodreads <laughs> oh. so I didn't even like look up reviews of this or anything but I didn't see the book that I hated on the shelf at the library so I'm guessing that these are probably better and just the premise of these sounds Have you read the Mrs. Piggle Wiggle books Missy Piggle Wiggle so it's like her as a child Okay, but have you read the ones, the original ones? No, I've heard of them. Okay. But I've heard that these are, like, really fun. Yeah, yeah. Um, so anyway, so just since I saw this, I saw it was available, and then, um, so we're going to give Anna Martin another try and break away from Christy, Marianne, Don, Stacy, Mallory, Jesse, Shannon, Logan, who am I forgetting? All of them. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, so I, I'm excited to kind of, revisit an author that I loved in a completely different world. That's but I'm also a little bit nervous. <laughs> I'm mostly excited. Um, okay. Mm, these books are so good. Uh, so the Gone Away Lake, which, okay, mm -hmm. these books were written in the 50s, but these are 80s reboot covers. So here we go. He reads Claudia. Oh, yeah. yes. I knew oh, I was forgetting what? somebody. <laughs> um, yeah, Gone Away Lake. And then return to Gone Away Lake. So in these ones, there there are cousins, Portia and Julian, and they, um, they Portia and her brother Foster come to stay at Julian's house for the summer because they live in the country. And um, one day when Portia and Julian are in the woods wandering around, they get lost and they end up finding this swamp, this like shallow swamp, and all of these abandoned Victorian mansions, um, except for there are two, there's uh, an old lady and an old man who each live in a mansion and they're brother and sister. And this used to be like a, um, what do we want to say? Like a summer vacation area. And it used to be a lake. Um, but now it's abandoned and it's turned into a swamp. And so it's uh, Aunt Minnie and Uncle Tar, I think is his name, or Uncle Pin, that's what it is. Um, and they tell Portia and Julian, they're like, you can each have a house that you can fix up for yourself. And so they have this Victorian mansion to be their clubhouse. And um, so Portia ends up making a couple of like girlfriends and Julian has some boys that he's friends with. And, um, and so they have the clubhouses. And then in return to Gone Away, when Portia's parents come for like the last week of summer to do vacation, they are so taken with the houses that they decide they're going to buy Portia's one and fix it up. And their family's going to like live there as a summer home. Um, 
So yes, it's just kind of, what I like about it is it's in the realistic fiction category. So sometimes with fantasy, it's like so different. And it, I, I kind of am like, hmm, like, boy, you know, I, I really wish like real life could have more exciting things like that. But with something like that, it's like, oh, they get a big, cool house. That's kind of more like in the realm of something that could possibly happen. Um, so, yeah, they're wonderful books and they have really nice illustrations in them, too. And I really like them as a kid. And my TBR just got two books longer because those <laughs> sound like so much fun. OK, I will say, though. If, you know, you have so much in your, your TBR for middle grade March, they're wonderful summer reads. I was going to say, they sound like they'd be great, like, end of May, beginning of June, when the summer yes. is ahead of you, just brimming with possibility. Possibility! That sounds so great. <laughs> really funny. Um, yes. So, uh, I forget who's, I guess, Bethany, are you? Bethany, next? Yeah. Oh, um, we did get another two comments. Rainy Day Reads said, you forgot Claudia, Becky. Uh, how could Claudia I? was her favorite. <laughs> also to our um, viewers, sorry about the delay. There's a little bit of, of a delay since we're live. So when you're commenting, we may not see it right away. And then we're on to a new topic. I'm sure that can be frustrating sometimes because you're trying to be relevant and we're like already on to something else and we've left your comment in the dust. So apologies for that. We <laughs> we try to catch them when we can. Um, we just get crazy and start chatting away at a new <laughs> new subject. That's oh, all. I forgot Abby. But she she can't comment. Until very late in the series. She was a junior babysitter, right? No, Abby was. Oh. She didn't. Mallory and Jesse were junior babysitters. Abby didn't show up until probably like book 70 or 80 or something. She was a twin, but her twin sister was so busy with after school activities, she couldn't be in the babysitters club. Um, but she lives in Christie's neighborhood and um, Shannon just gets very busy as an, and can't commit to being an alternate officer. So Abby joins the club. Who I was that? very dedicated to this series as a child. <laughs> Awesome. <laughs> I just think we remember one of the books. Abby describes herself as using the every pot in the kitchen method for cooking. And anytime I have a lot of dishes, I'm like, I'm using the Abby method of cooking. Awesome. <laughs> Obscure. What's your favorite, Becky? Marianne. That's right. I'm like, okay, I know this. Marianne. The doppelganger. I know, right? Like, I had long hair, and then I cut my hair short, and I also enjoyed Carrie Grant films. That's awesome. <laughs> you, better, you better move on, Bethany, because I could talk Baby Sears Club all day, and that's what not what we're here to we'll, talk. We'll get on with Carrie Grant, and then we'll all be gone all day. <laughs> <laughs> Let's just be honest here. <laughs> but um, I really, I read um, A Little Princess last year. Is that what, or the um, is it a or the a little princess? Um, same author as uh, the Secret Garden, which the Secret Garden was one of my like favorite favorite books as a kid. I read that book and was just like transported to this amazing cool garden, and I was like, why don't I have a garden like that? You know, I mean, just all the feels. But a little princess was one I watched the movie. And I had never read the book as a child. And so as an adult, I'm I'm like reading this book. I'm like, oh, all these feelings. Like, I remember watching the movie and it's so charming. And then I got to the end. And I was just like so upset because it ended different than the movie. And I thought the movie was done like uh -huh. way better. I don't know if anybody has like the reverse experience where they read the book, then watched the movie and they, they like prefer the book. Or if they really thought like, hey, the movie did a better job. The movie was better. I feel like that is the only book I've ever read where I was like, yeah, the movie, the movie handled that way better. I don't know. I was so disappointed. But I saw half the movie as a kid at a friend's house and then had to leave. So I never saw the ending. <laughs> and then I read the book as an adult. Oh and my, my husband, who grew up with sisters, was familiar with Little Princess. We found it like used, I don't know, at a thrift store, or used bookstore or something. So he picked it up and we watched it. And I saw the last half and I was kind of like, I 
don't I don't think that that's how the book ended. I wasn't expecting this ending. I, I think this is a little bit different, but there was a bit of time in between when I read the book and the movie. So um, I was like, I, I don't think that's how it happened in the book, but I don't really remember. Um, I will say, I pr this may be an unpopular opinion. I did not love the Hunger Games books, but I thought, um, I thought the story was told better with the movie just because in the story, everything's broadcast. And I felt as though that can be communicated better on film than in the book. So if you're talking about movies better than the books, I would put Hunger Games in that category. Yeah. But then that's probably an unpopular opinion. So. I don't know. I think that's, I, I don't think that's, um, I feel like the the books were real popular and the first one was like really good. It got you going. And then the second one we're like, okay, what next? And the third one was kind of let down. So I think with the movies, I mean, I, I honestly think people could probably rate the movies as high or higher than the books just in that instance. But yeah, like a little princess, you know, when they end things differently, I know there's another um, Jodie Pico, Pico, how do you say her I, know last name? Name. I don't remember yeah. how to her name. My Sister's Keeper, I think, is the name of the book. Yeah. I watched the movie, then read the book, and they had different endings. And they were both good, in my opinion. I, I, I like both, and I like the fact that they did something different with each one. I know we're getting into kind of a tangent, but mm -hmm. I was just like, you know, that whole, like, ooh, it doesn't really spoil the book for you because... It's like, you know, you go see the movie, and, oh, wow, wow. And then you read the book, and you're like, wait a minute. They w they took a different direction. And I kind of liked that. But with A Little Princess, I felt like since it was middle grade or a child's book, I was like, there is only one way to end this. Why did they end it this way? I, that's how I felt. Obviously, everybody can have a different opinion about that. But, like, I did not like it. That so that's kind of like an anti recommendation, I guess. Like, don't read a little princess, guys. Don't I'm, do it. I'm gonna be bracing myself now because I'm reading it. So I'll are you? I think you'll like. I think you'll like it, Kate. I think it will check a lot of boxes for you. Okay. You might. I, it might just be me. Like I'm saying, it might just be me. Now I I grew up not with the '90s, a little princess. So I'm wondering. George, the Shirley if, Temple one. Shirley Temple is the one I watched. The what? Shirley Temple was the one I watched. Oh, as a I watched. Oh, it's so good. I was like harassing Becky to watch it a couple weeks ago. Um, it's one from the '80s. Um, yeah. and I wonder if that ending is the same because it was like a long one. It was like four hours. Mm. I think. Um, and you know how with like the longer miniseries, a lot of times they're just more faithful to the book. So I'm curious now. Yeah, we'll just have to wait and see. Stay tuned. Stay tuned. Um, okay. Mr. Popper's Penguins. Have either of you read this? I've not read it, but I've heard of it many, many times. I know it's kind of a children's classic. Yeah, it's lovely. Um, so it's just about Mr. Popper, who explorers in the North Pole get wind of him and send him, how many is it? Yes, 12 penguins. I was going to say 12. I was like, it's probably 12. They probably gave him an even dozen, didn't they? <laughs> Were you really going to say 12? I was. I was just about to be like, they probably gave him 12 penguins. That's hilarious. <laughs> um, yeah, so it's just, it's very larger than life. Like, here's this picture. <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, and, like, they turn, they turn the basement into kind of like an ice area um and uh like he <laughs> um his wife like knits herself fingerless gloves so she can play the piano because the penguins all love it <laughs> um but it's too cold um so yes it's just very like whimsical and fun and um it's just i think it's over the course of a year um so i mean you kind of know it can't last forever living with 12 penguins um and mr mr popper is a house painter um so he doesn't have work kind of the whole winter but he has lots of work in the springtime and the summer and yeah it's just it's a very fun is the tone kind of like the paddington books oh 
That's so funny. I was going to talk about the Paddington books. Um, It's been longer since I've read Mr. Popper's Penguins. I I would say I think that sounds accurate, but it's been- Okay, I just both seem to have animals living with people yeah. in a kind of fun, whimsical way. Yes. Yeah, yeah. And kind of like a joyful spirit to it. I, I think I think that sounds right. That sounds really fun. Yes. Except the penguins don't talk. Oh, okay. I'm like Paddington from Darkest Peru. <laughs> I love it. My kids love Paddington. Oh, and you know what? That is, uh, those are books. I actually, I hadn't read them before, but now I'm reading them with Peter, where I think the movies do them justice. Yeah. The yeah. We, we, we enjoy them. Um, yeah. They're such good movies. I really like them. So just who I, we like, I don't know who's next in the rotation. So whoever. I think Becky. Okay. Pretty sweet. Yeah. Okay. Um, ugh, I'm going to try to go fast. I've got okay. three, three big stacks of books next to me. Just so, like yeah. going through them, like fireworks. Like, boom, just boom. Quickly. So I was browsing the shelves on my library and I think I'd heard of this series before. Uh, um, I'm not sure. But it's um, an Enola Holmes mystery, so she's either like the little sister or like stepsister or something of Sherlock Holmes. Oh. Um, so this is the case of the missing Marquis. I'm all I love Sherlock Holmes, and I'm very open to inspired by Sherlock Holmes stories, but I can also be rather critical of them because I love Sherlock Holmes as a You're character. Like they're done well. Yes. So. Um, I feel like I've heard the name, but I don't really know anything about the series, but I'm going to go on with an open mind. Um, and I just kind of liked the cover of, oh, you're getting some glare there, of this yeah. girl. Like, My whole oh. life is a lie. What is the title? Can you bring it down? Um, an Enola Holmes mystery, the case of the missing Marquess. No, but do you say it Marquis? Is there such it's thing? A, it's the female version. The female is Marquess. I must, I, did I say Mark? I am so no. bad at mixing up my words. I probably said the wrong thing. Okay. Cause I was like, maybe there's not like, okay. All right. I'm better now. No, I probably said that I'm notorious for saying that I'm going to put my clothes in the dishwasher. Like I, <laughs> I, say, the wrong, I say the wrong word all the time. The scary thing about doing live shows. But anyway, so I don't really know anything about this, but and I don't even know where I heard of this series, but I just saw it on the shelf and was like, that looks interesting. And I couldn't stop myself. I started it and didn't finish it. It was, I had a pile of books. That's the only reason I didn't finish it. I read like half and I really liked it. Okay. Awesome. Um, the other one is Mary Poppins. Oh. Um, again, grew up with the movie. Movie is very different from the books. I actually received the second Mary Poppins book, Mary Pop Poppins Comes Back for Christmas. So I've actually read the second one, but I haven't read the original Mary Poppins. So I thought I need to change that. And then um, in January, I, I read Escape from Mr. Limoncello's Library. And the sequel, or the next in the series, is Mr. Limoncello's Library Olympics. Oh, fun. So this is kind of, I felt as though the first one was like, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory and Encyclopedia Brown meets Jumanji. It's like books and board games and a lockdown library. But That's it's super but, fun. The, but the first one was a very interactive read. Like if you've ever read the Encyclopedia Brown books, they have like little clues and you're supposed to solve it. Mm -hmm. um, so they'd have like little clues like printed in the book. Um, so this is the, this is just the next book in the series. I will say I had a friend who read the first one and loved it and read the second one and did find it kind of disappointing. So I'm kind of going in anticipating this to be a three star read, but the first book was just really fun. So I'm just like, you know, if this is just like a fun three star read, I'm okay with that. And if it ends up being better than that, that's great. So Green I'm assuming book. there's, I'm assuming there's, an, yeah, um, the first ever library Olympics, and I don't want to read any more than that because I don't want any spoilers, but it just, it looks really fun. So those are on my TBR for March going. Excellent. 
Fast. Um, Jessica Wisconsin mom says lovely chat between you all thanks for the commiseration on my move I'm drawing inspiration from Ellen Montgomery <gasps> I didn't know this who had to leave her beloved Prince Edward Island for Toronto me either now I really need and she like if anybody yeah. loved where they lived it was Ellen Montgomery she loved Prince Edward Island yeah oh. I did not know this yeah. I didn't either so I didn't actually have like my TBR ready for tonight. So I'll just do, I have one more recommendation. Yeah. And that is, cause I'm still like fixing up my TBR. I keep adding things to mine. I, 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 yeah. Mine was like seven books long. Now I think it's 11 books long. <laughs> An aisle. I have one so far. That's it. Hey. I've got one on my TBR. Really? Yeah, there's such a range, isn't there? It's like last year, I'm like, 11. And today, this year, I'm like, oh, I've got one. Maybe, oh, well, no, two with the Betsy Tacy one. I've That's got two. <laughs> um, the Penderwick books. <gasps> Ooh. So these are books that um, they feel like they were written a long time ago. They have such a classic feel to them. So yeah, there's the Penderwicks. Um, the Penderwicks on Gardam Street. Uh, the Penderwicks at Point Mouette. And then the fourth book, which I can't even remember the name of it, um, I, was unfortunately a really low point in the series. There's like the youngest sibling who I think is five when the book happened. No, maybe she's older than that. Regardless, um, she overhears something that like no little kid should ever overhear. It's like such a like, this knowledge is like such a burden on her. And the whole plot of the book is her like being like torn up about this. Oh. Yeah, it was it was just like too intense for, for mm -hmm. comfort. Um, and then the last one, the Penderwicks in spring, which is when they're all grown. Um, I haven't read that one yet. So I've read the first four, just not the fifth one. Um, okay, no more chat. Well, it is 9.43. Do we have any? Closing comments. Um, I mean, I still have like a huge stack of books around me, but I think I. Why don't you show another stack then? Well, um, I'll just mention I'll just mention two more because they kind of they kind of go together. Now, this one, I think, may spark an interesting conversation because I think we have mixed feelings on it. So, I in January, I read a lot of children's books in January, so I kind of feel as though I had a head start on middle grade in March. It's just going to be middle grade 2019. No. Um, <laughs> I read Grounded, The Adventures of Rapunzel, which is a Rapunzel story. Um, and I thought it was really fun. It was a light read and I had a sinus infection while I was reading it. So something light that I didn't have to concentrate on too hard was really fun. Um, I'm finding that I really enjoy Rapunzel stories. Um, oh. Crest and the Lunar Chronicles was my favorite book in the Lunar Chronicles. And that one's kind of a Rapunzel retelling. So even though Belle is my favorite Disney princess, I'm beginning to think Rapunzel is one of my favorite fairy tales. Um, so I read that and I really enjoyed it. And the author wrote another book set in the same universe mm -hmm. called uh, Disenchanted, The Trials, okay. The Trials of Cinderella or The Cinderella Trials, the way that it covers The Trials of Cinderella. So this one's a Cinderella retelling. Kate, have you read this one or is this on your Cinderella Chronicles? Yeah, so it was like, oh, I can't, I think it was last summer that I read it, I think. Okay. Um, anyway, just since it was, you know, middle grade reading level, I enjoyed Rapunzel, I enjoyed the universe that it was set in, and I was like, oh, well, I'll pick this up. And with Kate working on her Cinderella Chronicles, I feel like I need to read a Cinderella book to keep up. So um, this one have read, this one I want to read. Okay. Um, so oh, partial. Okay. Partial recommendation and partial. Cinder Cinderella yeah. one is set in the garment district. <gasps> yes. I love this. Yes. Oh yeah. There's a lot about um, fashion and stuff in it. Yeah. For those of you that are watching and don't know this, I love sewing. So not that I'm even very good at it or anything, but oh, any yeah. like I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm very very I'm good. very drawn to stories about like clothes and making clothes just because it's like a side hobby of mine that I get very into. Yes. So that just made me uber excited because I picked I picked this one up blind. 
I was just like, Cinderella, that's all I need to know. Oh, I'm so excited now. Yeah. yeah, and actually, I definitely preferred that one to the Rapunzel one. Okay. Yes. So, okay, Bethany, have you, you've DNF'd grounded? I did. Yes. <laughs> I love how you sound like you're confessing. I did. <laughs> I'm on trial here. No, I'm just kidding. No, no book police here. Um, I don't know if I would have finished it if it wasn't on audiobook. I think I really enjoyed it as an audiobook, but it is really long. It is. Um, and so that's interesting. Now I wonder, like, do I love the actual, like, story of Cinderella, of uh, Rapunzel? And I'm not sure. I mean, I really liked Crest, but yeah, so I, I thought it was fun, but um, I'm, I'm excited to hear what you think about the Cinderella one. And we'll definitely do a check-in. Yes. I'll text you updates as I'm reading it. <laughs> yes. Yay. Yeah. Um, so am I the only one in the group who's planning on reading Sweep? Oh, I am too. Oh, you are? <gasps> yep. Hey. That is I not know. one. <laughs> no, I have the Betsy Tacy ones too. So, nice. but yeah. That is the one I was like, ooh, the group read. I really enjoy that. I like the, like I said, with the middle grade March being kind of a community, oh. like a book community thing. I like the idea of participating in at least the group read. I think that's a lot of fun. Like the girl who drank the moon, when I read it, it was the group pick la last year. When I read it, I wasn't like as wowed by it. But when they started talking about it and discussing it, I was like, ooh, there is more to this than I thought there was. And it kind of changed my opinion on some of the things in the book that I just maybe kind of blazed over and didn't really like take time to analyze. So I thought, okay, that's kind of fun. Reading something as a group really um, gives it a like another layer. So yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's true. And I know like from college classes too, or book clubs, you know, you come and you're like, all right, you know, this is how I feel about the book. And then sometimes you can be like way more pumped about it after hearing people discuss it well. Oh, Rainy Day Reed says, I'm really excited for Sweep. Who am I kidding? I'm excited for my entire TBR. Uh, yes, I, I really, Sweep does sound like a book that I could really love. And let's just be honest too, the cover is stunning. Oh, yeah. That's a nice, middle grade March. There's a lot of pretty covers out there. Yes. yes. And there's something about, like, the size of the book, too. Yes. That, uh, like, it's not, I don't know. There's, I, just grabbing all of the, I, I think, I was just going to the library, like, I need this one, I need this one. And they just feel so nice in your hand, guys. It's like candy, you know? They're <laughs> also approachable. You can just read them and enjoy them and they're fun and yeah it's really like if you okay you know how you'll have some of those days where you're like today was just a reading day like i made tons of progress it's not like that crazy to read one in a day if you really no. enjoy. yeah um, so that's why yeah that's why i just keep like adding on my tbr adding on my tbr but then i have to decide like how many am i willing to check out at the library like in front of other people <laughs> Oh, I've had that. I told you guys about that. That one time I got um, Nevermore in the library. I was like, oh, is this for you? Like, how? Is, or do you have an, a child of this age at home? I'm like, no, I don't have a child that old at home. <laughs> it is for me. <laughs> but then you told him about BookTube. So yeah, yes, I did. He didn't know about BookTube. So, you know, it's okay. It's okay. <laughs> I, at, at my library, we have a, um, you can go to the desk, but they also have a self-checkout. Out. <laughs> <laughs> Get so I was, like doing all my kids' books on the self checkout. <laughs> <laughs> like only I need to know what I'm taking home. You're like just being low key here, like sliding with the one hand. It's so funny because shouldn't adults be reading these books? You know, like I mean, we're we're influencing the next generation. We could be mothers, teachers. I mean, who knows what we could yes, be? Lewis quote: Like one day you'll be old enough again to read these stories. Yes, that's not the exact quote, but I do think that was C.S. Something like that. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, and honestly, I wish some of these books, like the Betsy, like the Betsy Tacey series or others, I wish I had known about or been prodded a little bit more to read as a kid because 
Yes. Again, coming back to You've Got Mail with Catherine Kelly, the reading that you do as a child impacts your life in a way that, you know, books at another time in your life can't. That's not the exact quote, but, you know, books that you read yeah. as a child really do impact your, impact your life in a way that the way reading they as an adult just it it doesn't compare so okay. i'm i'm really excited i think middle grade march is great because you can kind of sift through and find those things that are good and you know hopefully pass it along to a niece or a nephew or your kids or your grandkids or just enjoy them for yourself um but but yeah and i felt as though when i was at that perfect age for our middle grade i felt as though i really struggled with finding age appropriate books because things were either like young adult and the content was more mature than what i wanted to read or i was reading things that were below my reading level so i think if an adult in my life had more of an arsenal where they could be like here is what you should be reading um yeah. i think i would have really like that but well, that's water under the bridge. So I'm just going to read them in as a development yes. with them and appreciate that I have a faster reading speed now. Well, you can <laughs> I can recommend just... them to Ava. Yes. And, um, and to your nephews. Yes. Um, exactly. It made me very, very happy. So you know how in my kitchen I have my like wall of illustrations that I have like framed. Yeah. From, like my favorite books. And um, our pastor's family came over and they have two girls. And um. The, his wife saw the illustration, saw, you know, one of the illustrations and she's like, Mata, come in here. What is this from? And she saw it. She said, oh, it's from the Betsy Tacey books. And I was like, oh, wait a second. You know about these. And we just, we like bonded over it. And it was. Kindred spirits. Yes. Kindred spirits. Um, Bobby Davis says, the librarian at my library says the same thing to me when I check out the Little House on the Prairie books. Those, I still reread those. Those are some of my favorite books of all time. That's actually, my husband did not read those books until we were married. And he, he loved them. them. Yes. He really enjoyed them. Um, Whenever people ask me, like, who's your favorite literary couple? I mean, I love Elizabeth Bennett and Mr. Darcy, but my answer is hands down. <laughs> Lauren Ingalls and Alonzo Wilder are the greatest literary couple of uh, all time. I in my love love to visit their farm in the Ozarks. That's like one of my dream vacations. Um, and then Jessica, Wisconsin mom says, yes, M Montgomery's long suffering homesickness for the island led to such beautiful tributes in her work. I wish I could channel my love for place into words like she could well I feel like you should just try writing about it and write a little bit every day and you never know what could come from it yes I just finished Stephen King's on writing which oh. was very good and yes just write I'm not a writer but his advice write a little bit every day yeah right okay there we go right so there bit. we go you never know because I mean Laura Ingalls Wilder maybe like I think her daughter encouraged her to Yeah, have um oh my gosh. It's in the other room. Otherwise I've got it. But um there's a book that came out a few years ago oh. called Pioneer Girl. I think that's yeah. the title of it. Yeah. And it's like her manuscript for the Little House books, which were based on her life, but they aren't truly autobiographical. Mm -hmm. So it's like her manuscript is in the middle and it has very wide margins. And the wide margins are all notes and a lot of them are from letters back and forth between Laura and her daughter. So what actually what I did is I went through and I read the manuscript and then I went back and I read all of the side notes and the footnotes. Oh, and yeah. it, it was, so if you are a Laura Ingalls Wilder fan, uh -huh. it's not a children's book and she intentionally like left things out of her original manuscript because she didn't, she wanted the books to be appropriate for children and she wanted to kind of communicate a certain narrative. Um, but especially her parts about like the parts of her life that inspired the long winter, the, the actual book, the long winter is like very mild compared to really? the actual like length. They were still shoveling out snow in May. Like there's this picture of a train coming through with supplies and the date of the photo is like earlier mid May and the snow is just like piled up over adult men's heads. Like, 
it is insane. But if you are a Laura Ingalls Wilder like nerd slash lover, Pioneer Girl is an amazing read. Highly recommend. So cool. And now she was kind of she had kind of a tense relationship with her daughter, didn't she? Um, I think I don't know. It makes me so sad there are no ancestors because her daughter yeah. didn't have kids. Oh, yeah, yeah. Oh. Also, um, Pioneer Girl has uh, scanned photographs of the real Ingalls family, so you can That's see pictures true. of. The real Ma and Pa Ingalls, and Pa Ingalls does have a very impressive beard. <laughs> <laughs> and now the long winter, like that's that winter happened because Krakatoa erupted, right? Oh, I didn't know. I don't know. I think the volcano Krakatoa erupted, and it like just totally threw a lot of things in the environment off for a while. Uh, I never heard that. I mean, I'm just reading about life on the prairie, so I wasn't even thinking yeah. about volcanoes or context. I just know it was a incredibly frigid winter. Yeah. Oh. Well, this has been lovely, ladies. This has been a lot of fun. I, I wish it was March so I could dive into all my books. No. It's so close, though. I know. Just we do it. The loose ends in our reading this week. And um, yes, next Saturday, that's my big library day when I go <laughs> my holes and embarrass myself with my checkouts. Never be embarrassed. <laughs> Never. <laughs> Don't Allison embarrass you. We need um, like bookish merchandise to like deck you out in Kate. Like, so you can go to the library, you got like a headband that's got like, I love books and like, <laughs> like <laughs> sunglasses with like books all around the corners and like a quote t shirt. And, a, and you know, of course, the bag or a wheelbarrow, you know. I have a Gone with the Wind tote bag. That's where I, that's I take perfect. Like, um, I, I mean, I am slightly started in that I'm listening to the audiobook of Where the Red Fern Grows. So that's that's my little appetizer. That's what I'm going to call it. I've never read that one, and I'm waiting for you to be done with it before I decide whether or not I'm going to read it. Same. Um, good. Yes. Waiting for the official Kate Howe review. <laughs> oh, I will definitely let you know. Yes, right. and Rainy Day Reed says she wants to start now. <laughs> um, yes, so... I guess that's all. Thank you everyone for watching and um, participating in the chat. Or if you're watching later, thanks for tuning in then and leave comments um, with anything you thought. And we'll be back for um, a March show. Yay. Have a good night. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Thank you.